Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Review. We're going to be reviewing approximately 10 cases in pre- and post-operative care. Let's get started with the first one. 23-year-old woman undergoes total thyroidectomy for carcinoma of the thyroid gland. On the second post-operative day, she begins to complain of a tingling sensation in her hands. Now, the question asks, um, she appears to be anxious and later explains that she has muscle cramps. Appropriate therapy over the next several days might include the administration of what substance? So really, you know, before you look at the answer choices, it's always good to kind of understand what the question is trying to ask. The patient has undergone a thyroidectomy and the symptoms are feeling of anxiousness and complaining of muscle cramps. Those are you know key findings that you want to remember so the answer choices are 10 ml of say 10 percent calcium chloride intravenously continuous infusion of calcium gluconate oral calcium gluconate or oral vitamin D and again understanding that uh, the answer choices can have several right answers the correct answer here is going to be 10 ml of 10% of calcium chloride IV and oral calcium gluconate as well. Now post thyroidectomy hypocalcemia is what this patient is suffering from and it's usually due to transient ischemia of the parathyroid glands and is self-limited. When it becomes symptomatic it should be treated with IV infusions of calcium. In most cases the problem is resolved in several days and if hypocalcemia persists then Oral therapy started with calcium gluconate, which is what we recommended. So first you would start with IV calcium, and uh, if it still persists, then oral calcium gluconate is recommended. And understand that vitamin D preparations are only used if hypocalcemia is prolonged and permanent hypoparathyroidism is suspected. So that was a case on post-thyroidectomy induced hypocalcemia. The next case talks about hypocalcemia and its association with alkalosis, prolonged QT syndrome, hypomagnesia, or myocardial de depression. Again, the answer here is all of the above. Hypocalcemia is associated with alkalosis. All right, it's associated with a prolonged QT, um, and again, it's also associated with hypomagnesia. Serum calcium levels below 7.0 um, encountered most frequently following a parathyroid or thyroid surgery or in patients with um, acute pancreatitis should be treated with intravenous calcium gluconate or lactate. Understand that the myocardium is very sensitive to calcium levels. Therefore, calcium is considered a positive ionotropic agent and calcium increases the contractile strength of the cardiac muscle as well as the velocity of shortening. In its absence, the efficiency of the myocardium decreases. And so, remember the associations. Hypocalcemia associated with alkalosis, prolonged QT, hypomagnesia, and myocardial depression. Let's review another case. This talks about enteric fluids have an electrolyte content similar to that of Ringer's lactate, which include um, saliva, ileal contents, right colon contents or bile. So the question is asking enteric fluids. They have an electrolyte content consisting of sodium, potassium, and chloride similar to that of Ringer's lactate. Which enteric fluid has that? Saliva, ileal contents, right colon contents, or bile? The answer here is actually ileal contents and bile, those two bile and the fluids found in the duodenum, jejunum, and ileum all have an electrolyte content similar to that of Ringer's lactate. Saliva and right colon fluids have high potassium and low sodium content, so that's a key association. Um, it is important to consider that these variations in electrolyte patterns um, are important when calculating replacement requirements following GI loss. And so that concludes three important cases that we've gone over. Um, let's talk about another case here. 
reduction of an elevated potassium level can be obtained by the use of what? Sodium polystyrene sulfonate, sodium bicarbonate, glucose and insulin, or calcium gluconate? Well, this is an interesting question because you have to pay attention to the wording. It says reduction of an elevated potassium. The answer is um, K-oxalate, sodium bicarb, and glucose and insulin, but not calcium gluconate. Reduction of an elevated potassium level is important to avoid cardiovascular complications that can ultimately lead to diastolic cardiac arrest. K-oxalate is a cation exchange resin that is instilled in the GI tract and exchanges sodium for potassium ions. However, its use is limited uh, to semi-acute and chronic elevations, and sodium bicarb causes a serum rise in pH and shifts potassium intracellularly. So, also the administration of glucose initiates glycogen synthesis and uptake of potassium. And insulin can be used in conjunction with this to aid in the shift of potassium intracellularly. Also, calcium gluconate, it does nothing to affect serum, serum potassium levels, but uh, it's mainly used to prevent arrhythmias um, and counteract the myocardial effects of hyperkalemia. So those were some of the key associations with hyperkalemia. And that really concludes our lecture for today for pre- and post-operative care. Good luck in your studies.